This is a short story, but it really freaked my husband and me out big time. My husband and I love weekend camping in Utah, specifically in the area of Simpson Springs. We've camped there a few times, and the camping spot we've had our eye on the last couple of trips was actually available. So we jumped at the chance of getting it. It's surrounded by a couple of huge boulder rocks, so it's a little more private than the other campsites. On this particular weekend, we went mountain biking on the Porcupine Rim Trail, doing what they call the whole enchilada. So we made an entire day out of it. After a long day of biking, we were really looking forward to a nice campfire and a cozy night in our tent trailer. After we ate dinner and enjoyed the fire, the wind started to pick up. So we decided to go to bed early, since we were getting up early anyway, to try out the Amasa back trail. We put out the fire and made sure that everything was locked up. As we were lying in bed half asleep, my husband says, Hey, do you hear that? I sat up and I heard someone walking around our tent trailer. We peeked out of the windows, but we couldn't see anything. Yet we could still hear something or someone walking around out there. A few minutes passed by and we were both wondering what the hell we should do. As we were standing by the door, suddenly someone tried to open it. Now there are two doors, a screen door and the main door. And luckily they were both locked. They tried to open the door again. So we both pulled out our guns and my husband then yelled, hey, who the hell is out there? We waited for a long minute. And again, we heard someone walking around outside of the trailer. Another few minutes went by and we didn't hear anything. So we decided to go outside and see if we could see anyone or anything for that matter. But the size of the footprints sounded more human than animal. As we were walking around, we realized there were no fresh footprints, as the wind from earlier had brushed the soft dirt over everything. And all we saw were our own footprints that we had just made. We decided to go back to bed with our guns ready just in case, but we didn't hear anything else for the rest of the night. The next day, we did the Amasa back trail again, and once more, we camped in the same spot. We went to bed early, waiting to see if anything would happen again. Well, wouldn't you know it? We heard what sounded like someone walking around our campsite again. But whatever it was, we didn't try to open the door again. Thank God. When we got up the next morning, we inspected around. And the only footprints we saw were our own, and no animal prints either. We decided to pack up camp that morning and went to another spot close by. We drove around the arches that day. And when we got back to camp, someone had already taken the spot we were in just the last two nights. We decided to warn them, no matter how crazy it sounded. But we really believed it was a haunted campsite because again, we didn't see any fresh footprints in the dirt, but ours, whatever the case, it was absolutely a creepy experience for us. When I was 17, I went camping with a big group of my friends, six of us, including me, all huddled together with enough alcohol to fill a brewery. We were camping out in a forest in our town, which was very rural, with less than 200 people. We didn't even have a supermarket. We only had a gas station you could walk to in about 10 minutes. The nearest supermarket was a 30 minute drive away, so you needed a car to live in this town. Everyone knew everyone, and we were really bored teenagers looking for fun. I was having the time of my life. It was 3 a.m. in pitch black, and we were telling spooky stories, drunk out of our asses. When I ended up puking, I knew it was time for me to go to bed. Our parents all knew what we were up to, trusted us because we were usually 
a responsible group. Our town was so tiny that they felt it would be fine. The forest wasn't even that far away from our houses, which ended up being just our luck. I was asleep, but not for long. I woke up to thumping outside my tent. I was in a tent with two of my friends, wedged in between them both, because they were so worried about me rolling onto my back during the night. I was groggy, and the tent was spinning, even though it was so dark. I remember grabbing my phone and checking the time, but I couldn't see it because my eyes were so blurry. I was too messed up to want to move, but the thumping was really annoying me. I ended up shouting to shut up, assuming it was a friend from the other tent. It was silent, and then suddenly chaos ensued. Something jumped onto our tent, literally like a starfish throwing itself on top of us. I started screaming, and then my friends woke up in fear and drunk confusion as well. They weren't as drunk as I was, but I was so scared that I almost felt sober again. We were all screaming and thrashing around. Somehow, we got out of the tent because the weight lifted, and my other friends dashed out of theirs as well, screaming, what's wrong? What's wrong? One of my friends explained that something jumped on our tent and we were all babbling and waving our phone flashlights around. My friend had spotted a flashlight on the ground that wasn't ours, and we all freaked out even more. One of my more sober friends eventually shouted that we all had to cool it and get out of there and go back to his place. We agreed, and we didn't even take half of our stuff. We just grabbed whatever and fled back to his house. It was like 15 minutes of just running in the dark, totally terrified. Once we got there, he had a key, and we all just crashed inside. We couldn't stop wondering what had happened, and my friend's parents even woke up as we were being so loud. My friend's dad said in the morning that we'd all go back and take a look, and that we probably just imagined it, because we were obviously in a state. When I woke up later, I felt rough as hell, but I also knew that I hadn't imagined it. Neither did my two other friends. Our other friends all believed us, but my friend's dad didn't. That is, until we got there. When we went back, our tents were all cut up. We were so creeped out by this, and the stuff we left was also gone. Our sleeping bags and some food and alcohol were just missing. One of my friends also left a backpack that was gone too. She didn't have anything important inside, thankfully. But still, my friend's dad knew the local police officers very well due to how small the town was. They agreed that it was weird, and they said we should avoid that area indefinitely. They did scope the scene, but they never found anything. No handprints or any good evidence. I don't know what's scarier. The idea of something jumping on our tent and ripping it up, then stealing our stuff, or someone doing it. Bears aren't an issue. Neither are coyotes or anything like that. Nothing is in this forest. My country doesn't have those things. The town is so small that it seems very unlikely that a stranger was there yet it's really disturbing to think that it was someone from our local community. This memory still gives me chills to this day. It's been a few years since this happened, and I still talk to all of my friends who are all there. We'll never know what really happened that night, but I'm just glad we were all all right. Maybe some things really are better not to know. I'm a 25-year-old male, and I was probably around 21 at the time that this happened. Several years ago, I was taking an afternoon walk down the nature trail just outside the subdivision where I lived. I want to note that this trail was right next to a moderately busy two-lane road with some houses on the opposite side of the road, so the area wasn't desolate. However, there was a line of trees and foliage 
that stood between the trail and the road, obscuring the view of one side from the other, so passing cars wouldn't have a clear view of what transpired on the trail. At some point, I spotted a woman, late twenties if I had to guess, standing alone in the middle of the trail. She stood there and watched me as I made my way down the trail towards her. Once I got close, she asked if she could borrow my cell phone to call someone. Now, I had already read enough scary stories on subreddits like Let's Not Meet to know tactics like this. I had heard the stories about a woman who had asked for aid, get people in a vulnerable position, and then a man would swoop in and take the mark by surprise. I did hesitate, but I still gave in to the social pressure and desire to help another person in need. I gave her my phone despite my better judgment. However, I was on edge. I tensed up and began looking around the place to see if anyone could pop out from somewhere, ready to react if someone would show up. I also made a point to remain standing in arm's reach of the woman. Then I heard rustling from the brush. I instantaneously turned towards the sound and watched as a man emerged from the foliage. He looked around the same age as the woman and was notably quite short, probably around 5'5", five five, if I had to guess. I was probably glaring at him with very obvious suspicion as he made his way over to the woman, standing at her side without saying a word. The woman then handed me my phone back, saying they didn't pick up not even reacting to the man's presence. I just took my phone and then left. What I assume happened is that they were planning to mug me, but ended up bailing for whatever reason. Maybe it's because I was visibly on edge and they figured it wasn't worth trying to get the drop on me. Maybe the guy figured there was too much of a size difference between us, or maybe he'd already put his plan into action made a little too much noise, and then bailed while keeping a completely cool face as he made his escape, his way over to his presumed significant other. For my part, I was ready to grab the woman and then use her as a human shield, maybe even push her onto the guy. I'm really glad it didn't come to that though, especially given the outside possibility there is some non-mugging explanation for this, but I guess I'll never really know for sure. Hello, my name is Liberty. I won't give you my last name for privacy reasons. I'm a 19-year-old female with long blonde hair and big blue eyes. It was springtime weather, so I was wearing my light blue top, Daisy Duke short shorts, and brown cowboy boots on my feet. I go to a university in Pennsylvania I decided to visit my parents for a few days, who lived several hours away from my university. The car I drove was a 10-year-old red Ford Mustang. The road I was driving down was the kind of road where you see nothing but miles and miles of road with dense woods on each side of it. Sometimes you see a few deer and foxes along the way. And then, to my disgust, I heard my car shake and rattle, and I just knew something was wrong with it. So I decided to pull my car to the curb. As soon as I pulled it over, my car's engine stopped completely. I tried over and over again to start it up, but it just wouldn't start. I then lifted up the hood of my car, and I knew it must have been my engine that had given out. Unfortunately, there was no cell phone signal where I was, and it was getting hot outside. I didn't want to die of dehydration, but all I could really do at that moment was sit on the hood of my car and just wait for help to arrive. But on a lonely road like this, that help could take a long time. An hour passed by with no vehicles yet. I looked up in the sky and saw a big red-tailed hawk flying lazily above me, almost hoping I would kick off and die so it could feed on my dead body. 
This was not an appetizing thought. I then heard a car rumbling down the road. When it got closer, I could see it was a 1919 Model T Ford, carrying in good condition, with an elderly man driving it. He looked like a preacher man, wearing glasses and a fedora black hat on his head, with a black minister's top on. I tried to flag him down, but he just quickly drove right past me without even looking in my direction. People are not as trusting of one another these days. He, being elderly, may have thought I was a highway bandit or something, and he was not going to take the chance of getting robbed or killed because of me. So I just watched as the oddly preacher in his 1919 Ford Model T then disappeared into the sunset, right as I looked up the road, hoping that another vehicle would pass by and help me very soon. Another hour passed by, then two. I was starting to sweat. It was getting hot now, and I was getting tired. I almost nodded off when I saw up the road another vehicle coming. It was an old pickup truck. As soon as it stopped, I was in total surprise to see this enormous 340 pounds man. He was in his 20s, unshaven, dirty, and unkempt. He wore blue overalls. He smelled like milk, yet underneath the smell was the smell of horse manure, but the smell of milk on his body was much stronger. The big man giggled and laughed and looked at me. I knew that he must be attracted to me by the way he was looking. Hey, miss, what are you doing way out here all alone like this? He smiled, and I could see many crooked and missing teeth. I was just about to answer this man when he suddenly grabbed my arm. Luckily, my arm was slick with sweat, and he couldn't get a good grip on me as I then yanked my arm away and started to run through the woods away from him. This man may have been a simpleton, but who knew what the hell he wanted to do with me, which was probably rape me and then kill me so there would be no witness as to what he had done. I didn't plan on giving him the chance. As I ran like hell through the woods, I then hid behind a big ass rock. But this man was smart enough to know that I must be hiding somewhere close, as he stopped running too, and then stayed in the area, calling me, Chicky, 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 come here, trying to lure me out. I then saw my chance as I saw a big branch nearby, and I then picked it up. I waited for him to get close so I could hit him with it and then make my escape. When the huge man got near the rock where I was hiding, I suddenly jumped out, surprising the hell out of him as I then clocked him right in the jaw with the big branch, to which he then yelled and then fell to the forest ground in pain. I then dropped the branch and took off down the woods. I could hear the man cursing at me in anger. Ouch, you! It was really frightening to me. I then looked back quickly, and I saw him getting up as he started to give chase yet again. I was running at about full speed down the woods at this point, when I then stopped in fright for a brief second as I saw a black bear growling at me not too far away. Yes, an actual bear. I then stopped and stared at him in fear. Then the bear suddenly moved off, frightened by the sounds that the large man was giving off. As then, I took off through the dense forest, trying to find me. Now, I took track and field in high school and college, and it was serving me well. I was still outrunning this man, but he could run remarkably well for his huge size, and I could still hear him not too far behind me. I was running at full speed down the dense woods when I felt a big tree branch hit me hard on the back. I then lost my balance and fell down a steep hill into the water. I was pretty hurt when the man threw the big branch at me, but when I was in the water, I decided to play dead. I must have been a good actress, 
because the big man, after staring at me for a full 12 minutes, lying seamlessly lifeless in the water, finally headed back through the woods where he came from. I figured that he must have known the woods pretty well, because it really seemed like he had no fear going right back to his vehicle. When the big man finally left, I waited a bit more just to make sure. As I got my battered body out of the water, I then ran up a hill. The main road wasn't too far away as I ran quickly to it. When I got to the road, I was in luck. There was a young man in a big Range Rover who had stopped to help me. I explained the whole situation to him, and when I got into his vehicle, he dropped me off at the police station. I thanked him many times for his help. Inside the police station, I explained everything to them and described what the man looked like to a police artist. Then I made the call to my parents, who picked me up and drove me home. They were thankful I was still alive with all that I had been through. Unfortunately, the police never found that man who was trying to harm me. I really regret this, because he'll probably try again with some other poor, attractive, and vulnerable woman in the future. I just pray that I never meet that man. This harrowing experience highlights the importance of staying vigilant and trusting one's instincts in potentially dangerous situations. It's also a reminder of the kindness of strangers who come to our aid in times of need. However, it's disheartening that despite the efforts of law enforcement, some perpetrators may evade capture, leaving a lingering sense of fear and vulnerability in their wake. Thank you for sharing your stories with us today. If you have your own story that you would like to share, you can send it to southerncannibal.com or email it to hi at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing your story. Have a good night or a good day, everyone. And remember to always stay hungry. This closing remark emphasizes the theme of storytelling and community engagement, while also incorporating a signature sign-off phrase, reinforcing the channel's identity, and encouraging audience participation. <laughs>